Let the Honorable Speaker, usually at death, people will give flowering speeches, including those who have made your life very difficult. There are lessons I have picked since uh, the Honorable Anya died. In fact, I intend to draw a list of those who will come near my body and those who will speak when I die. The Honorable Anya was shot at when he was a student guild speaker in Mackay 1991 by this government. The Minister of Health said that actually that is the origin of his problem. Madam Speaker, there are things that have annoyed me that I want to say before I say something about the Honorable Anya. First, the mishandling of his death. Of course, I can't accuse this government of competence. Because you needed to explain to the public what it means to accord someone a state funeral. A state funeral is extremely expensive. But every day you are pleading, no, this is not the budget. Now this is the budget. I'll give you an example. On Friday will be public holiday. If you look at the money we collect, even as URA, it means we lose more than 60 billion shillings on Friday. But because of the incompetence, you focus the whole country of discussing 1.8 billion shillings, scandalizing the owner of Bolanyi. But I also want to <coughs> caution, especially colleagues on this side, there are benefits in joining NRM. You can become a speaker. You can become a prime minister. But you must be ready to be judged by the crimes you have not committed. People who are demonstrating about the breakdown of healthy infrastructure in Uganda, we are not demonstrating against the Honorable Jacob Oranya. And I don't know why the President chose to keep silent this time. Because one of the monumental stories when I, did, uh, when I was a journalist at Dere Monitor, the very first person to be flown for treatment in Germany was President's daughter, Natasha. The presidential jet eventually became an air ambulance, taking the Honorable Nobu Mayombo, taking the Honorable former speaker, but the president, when they were harassing a dead Yoran, he kept quiet. I don't know why, but when we wrote about the daughter the following day, he was in all the papers explaining why it is important to fly people out. This government, you, you need to learn. I, I have said these things. One of the philosophers said, uh, and you'll forgive me if you are annoyed by what he said, I am only reminding you. He was against bringing extremely very ordinary people into high positions because they are going to be overwhelmed by power. There are people who are over simple, simple things. The budget of this parliament is about 600 billion shillings, which means every day we sit is about a billion. We have not sat for three weeks. Do you want to blame Moranya for that expense? But they all kept quiet. They were there fidgeting. Madam Speaker, let me speak about Olanya, having made those two points. <laughs> the first time I met Olanya... As, as you speak about Olanya, the next speakers, um, when you stand up, speak what you think Olanya would love to hear. Olanya was a very peaceful man. Let's for now speak, out, politics aside, let's talk about our leader who is lying here. What you he would love to hear. I, I thought that he would be happy when people are explaining the things that have happened since his death. People demonstrating. One thing you should Finally, know, one Madam thing, Speaker. Honorable Semuju, one thing you should know, you have a very able parliament and we are handling everything. We don't have any emergency or whatever. Everything is moving according to program. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I knew because if it was not for the intervention of this parliament and yourself, uh, uh, and, but I want, to <clears throat> I want to leave that. Because, Madam Speaker, it is very painful. The things that have happened since uh, Right Honorable Jacob Boranya did, 
He's the first person that has attracted a, a, a statutory revision of the budget. And you bring it here and you don't want the public to discuss how you are handling his funeral. But let me, let me Madam Speaker, finally speak about Oranya. I, I first interacted with Honorable Jacob Oranya as a lawyer, then as a Speaker of Parliament. I will say one point and see it. When we are handling the Public Order Management Act and we had a disagreement in this parliament, later on I was one of those that he ordered to be evicted. But he was not a vindictive man. After all those problems he reached out and actually I learned later that it was his style of work. The Honorable Nwagaba spoke about the bills left by the last parliament.